Hello, people. Uh, this is the Whiskey Rebels on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm here with my uh, buddy, Eros. Uh, we're going to have a little chat about the importance of prepping uh, for when the shit hits the fan. Um, bear with us. This is this is only our second try at this show uh, thing. So I'm working on not saying um or uh every other fucking word. Uh, <laughs> Eros is working on not scratching his balls on camera. <laughs> you, th you there, Eros? I'm still here, man. I'm with okay, you. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our our topic today is gonna be. Uh, prepping, and uh, when the shit hits the fan. Uh, we're definitely not experts, we just think it's a very valuable uh, and important topic to discuss and, and to think about. Today we're just going to go over the basics of it, and things that every everybody should, should worry about. So, Eros, uh, let, me just, let me just go ahead and get your views on this. So, you know, the way I define it, man, is a widespread event that disrupts the ability for, uh, for people to be able to provide for themselves uh, their basic needs, like uh, food, clothing, water, uh, shelter. Uh, and I wanted to add one more thing to that, defense, something that a lot of people don't talk about uh, when they talk about basic needs. I think it's extremely important now to consider defense as a fundamental need uh, right next to water. And food. Uh, all right, so Jason, uh, when the shit hits the fan and prepping, uh, what do these words mean to you, man? Well, uh, when the shit hits the fan is kind of, it's kind of like a funny term that people use, but it's also a term that these you know preppers use to describe any kind of emergency. It could be a short-term emergency, like a natural disaster, uh, just your power going out for a few days. Uh, some people even define it as something like you, you, know, you lose your job for a period of time or, you, or an illness, just something that you need to be prepared for that knocks you out of your normal life, uh, your, your com normal, comfortable life. Uh, prepping, to me, is just being prepared for these situations, for emergencies. Uh, I, I don't like the, 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 whole, the whole labeling of, of preppers as these crazy people that are out to, uh, to build bunkers and, and to survive a nuclear winter and the zombie apocalypse. I think that's kind of have been has been fed by the mainstream media and maybe Discovery Channel or wherever the fuck they have that show, the Doomsday Preppers, uh, where they have, you know, these these very 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 strange people on there that are preparing for, preparing for zombie apocalypses and shit like that. To me, that's just kind of marginalizing. Uh, as you were saying before, uh, that's just marginalizing normal behavior that no, your average everyday person should be doing. And, and to me, your average everyday person should be preparing for these situations uh, because they're predictable that they're going to happen. You know, maybe not, maybe not every, everyone's going to be live through a hurricane or an earthquake or something like that. But at some point in your life, you're going to live through some kind of unexpected emergency that hits or uh, and I think more importantly is some kind of situation that that we can actually predict that's going to happen uh, like some kind of, something like a financial collapse which which I think for sure is going to happen in this country uh, probably within 10 or 15 years um, and I just I, I think it's very important for people to be prepared for this stuff uh, what what about you, Eros? What do you what do you think? What what does the shit hit the fan and prepping mean to you? All right, so uh, no, like you said, man, prepping is just 
being ready for uh, any any situation that you consider to be important enough to either avoid or be prepared to handle. Uh, it, when the shit hits the fan, I, I think that that's an extreme scenario. That, that's you know for for some people, an extreme scenario could be the loss of power. So for them, that's a, you know, when the shit hits the fans kind of scenario. The reality is that certain views that people hold, uh, that they, they, they tend to prepare for, uh, the ones that are referred to as preppers, are scenarios, events that have had happened in the, in, you know, in the past. Uh, things that are likely to happen in the future, but people rarely accept as uh, either an eventuality or a possibility. E economic collapse. You know, when somebody prepares for banks to seize their assets, their money, uh, there's plenty of other people that view that as an extreme, uh, you know, preparing for that scenario. Some of the people view that as an extreme uh, action. Yeah, me, even you, though you don't, you know, me and you see that as, yeah. as as something that's more than possible, but very likely to happen in the near future. Not everybody views it that way. Uh, when we talk about Bitcoin, when we talk about gold, silver, when we talk about putting our money in something other than a bank, uh, a lot of people really don't respond too well to that kind of uh, idea. They either don't understand it, they think you're fucking nuts. Uh, or they just ignore you altogether. You know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of people don't just don't even want to think about it. They don't. They don't want to think about it. They they're comfortable in their lives. They don't want to think about a time when they can't g withdraw money from the bank. They don't want to think about a time when they the city doesn't give them water or electricity, or the, there's martial law going on. They don't want to think about that. So. Um, there's not so much you can do to, to help people that just refuse to think about it. But for people that would like to think about it, I think we can give them some information and, and, and get, them, get them at least in the mindset that they won't be helpless when the shit hits the fan. That, that was my plan, to show people, listen, you need to prep. It's important because you need to be worried about this shit. Most people aren't worried about it. They, that's, that's the last thing on their mind that they're worried about. That's the, that's the problem with all this. They're not worried about it, so why should they even spend much time thinking about it? But if we can make them worry about it, then, I mean, that's I was not worried about it until they learned you got to convince about, them somehow that the state, yeah, that, yeah. That, that what they rely on is unreliable. Yep. Well, the thing is, most people that are, that are probably going to be watching this already have that inkling. They already have that uh, distrust or or hatred of the state. So that's a, that's the very first part. You get that, and then a lot of this other shit, you know, makes makes a lot more sense. That that was my that was my point. Okay. So some. Some of the more long-term and predictable ways that the shit can hit the fan uh, that I believe are uh, could have a currency collapse, financial panic, food and energy shortages, martial law, or foreign occupation. A lot of these things actually have happened in this country in the past. Um, most are kind of happening already or... or are most likely will happen in the future. So I'm, I, I believe very strongly. I'll talk about this a little bit later about how what I think is actually what we can expect in the future. But a lot of these things you definitely should be prepared for. Um, number one, I would say for, for long term, is protect your assets. Protect your fucking assets. Um, you need to use uh, you need to use Bitcoin. Uh, we'll we'll have a definitely have a show on that on Bitcoin, but look into it. Uh, precious metals, gold and silver, is good. Um, need a good thing. 
to do for the, if the shit really is a fan is to collect barter items, and by that I mean non perishable perishable items like alcohol, cigarettes, ammo, hygiene items, hygiene products. The reason why these are going to be valuable in any kind of shortage, uh, financial problems, collapse martial law situation, any of those situations, these are going to be very valuable, maybe even more valuable than any kind of cash or money that you could have. So not just for your own use, but I, you may want to just stock up some, some extra alcohol and ever, you know, some extra cigarettes and Everclear, even if you don't smoke or drink. Um, another thing is, uh, of course, food and energy is huge. Um, things that you can do to prepare for that as well as getting more freedom in the meantime, is go off-grid. Off-grid power, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Solar, wind power, high, you know, hydropower, it's a lot cheaper and easier than it used to be. Then you're not rely, reliant on the uh, government monopoly, uh, government-enabled monopolies of power, food, water that you have right now. Uh, gardens is a huge one. Everybody... Everybody in the Great Depression, they made it through it. They made – everybody made it through a lot easier because they had gardens. They actually had gardens in their backyard. Everyone – it was so common. Nowadays, no one has fucking gardens. So that is a very important thing to have, An ability to produce your own food, a barter networks. So you can have some barter networks with your neighbors. Um Shit. Could just be like, hey, your neighbor has chickens and eggs, and you trade lettuce with them, and you know that's gonna persist no matter what happens with the dollar or whatever. Um, something there's a another thing called Earth ships uh, that is that is new now. A lot of hippies are all into this, but I think it's very important. Earth ship is basically a uh, permaculture house, a house that is built to sustain itself with with energy, uh, usually solar, food, they have gardens, you know, built into it, all kind, you know, fish ponds, gardens, and basically to be self self sustainable with food, with food and energy, and 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 usually waste too, waste waste food and energy. Uh, is all like recycled, and this this is all in the house. So I think this is the future, but it's very important to get away from from relying on these uh, centralized uh, either companies or government. Um, another thing, of course, you you want to you want to always have a bug out plan, bug out location, uh, which is just that just means ways to escape local conditions whenever you need to. Uh, another thing, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, prognostications for the shit hitting the fan. And the reason, my reason in talking about this is I want to convince you guys that a lot of this shit is probably going to happen in your lifetime, and you need to be prepared for it. I want to, I want to scare you in, into preparing for this shit. Uh, I've, been, I've been studying economics, politics, history for more than a few years now, and these come straight out of that. You know, uh, yes, yes, there are prognostications, and don't, don't take it as truth, but it, it, may, it may be 100 years, it may be whatever, but I think most of these things are going to happen within 10 to 15 years in this country. So <clears throat> let me start by describing some of this shit that I'm talking about. I think that we are going to have a collapse of the U.S. financial system, as we know it, within 10 to 15 years. This is this is basically baked into the system, and the system cannot sustain itself for much for much longer. It's 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 going to collapse. There there is a history of empires collapsing, especially once they get into using fiat currency. There is a lifespan of fiat currencies that we, as as a nation, are actually over. We are overdue for collapse of our currency, and I think the only reason we've been able to sustain it is is the global uh, warfare 
system that we have. Yeah, can um, I interrupt for a minute, man? Yeah. The, uh, the, the fact that we're beyond that, uh, the lifespan of a fiat currency. You don't think a lot of people would take that as evidence that actually it's that our way of doing it is functioning, that actually it's working? Especially when they're constantly uh, reminded that the economy is uh, thriving, it's doing better. Well, not if, right? not if they actually have ever uh, actually researched economics or monetary theory, theory besides what they hear from the mainstream media. So uh, my target is people that kind of know, they know what the Fed does with inflation. Um, they know that we're in, you know, we go, we're exponentially going in debt um, just to sustain the government as it is. The government, it, it always keeps growing and, you know, it does always collapse. So, no, I don't think we're in a new paradigm, anything like that. No, the fiat currencies are as shitty and unstable as they have always been. The only reason why they've been go this game, the sick fucking game, has been going on for so long, is because almost all the main nations around the world have been have been inflating their currency, their fiat currencies at the same rate, at almost the same rate. So it's like a, it's like a fucking sick game. They're all playing to inflate the currency just so the main currency, the dollar, and theirs as well, uh, doesn't look like it's de it's inflating and losing its value as quickly. So the citizens don't catch on to the fuck the sick game. So, but sooner or later. It goes faster and faster. You get to hyperinflation, and people start to catch on. I mean, your grandmother, if she put money in the bank uh, 70 years ago, there's almost nothing left. It's worth almost, you know, like 20% of what it was 70 years ago, probably less than that, maybe 10% of what it was 70 years ago. But and she might notice that, but she may not, because it's been been seven years. But if that if that inflation and that depreciation of the currency happens over maybe ten years time or five years time or one year time, a lot more people are gonna catch on to what the fuck is going on, and they are gonna quickly as you get into hyperinflation, you quickly your standard of living in the middle class will drop, completely drop. So a lot more people will realize that. A lot more people will start waking up at that point. Now it's kind of like, eh, there's a few more people waking up, but they're still able to borrow a lot of money, get into debt to to sustain their, their lifestyles. And, you know, it's, it's still going on. Um, I think that that once people figure out what the fuck is going on, with the dollar, there's going to be a lot of civil unrest, and I mean you can look you can look to history to see how this plays out. Um, places like the the Soviet Union in the 80s, uh, places like Argentina in the 90s, uh, the Weimar Republic. I think that was the 20s or 30s. That was in Germany. All right, so let me talk about one of the things that I think is probably going to happen within probably within the next 10 years. I think there's going to be a currency collapse, specifically the U.S. currency, but, you know, it is the dollar, the reserve currency of the world, so it is going to affect everywhere. But I believe there is going to be a currency collapse. I believe there's going to be a... Uh, loss of confidence in the dollar, both both abroad, which is already happening, uh, and uh, at home, and I believe uh, we will see hyperinflation. Um, it's it, it it may actually start with other currencies besides the dollar. It may start uh, Japanese yen, Chinese yuan. The euro, 
it may start with some some of the smaller currencies, smaller than that, and they may fail one by one until we get to the dollar. But the dollar will be reached because it's the main is the main thing backing backing all of that, and it's insolvent. Um, what we can things we can expect and things we can look out for. Uh, I believe that we will see. Let me, let me see here. I got a little list. Um, I believe first, first we'll actually see capital controls, which we are really seeing right now. Capital controls are uh, moves by the government to keep the capital and the money inside the country. So we're seeing that with. Uh, with all the laws for for uh, I think there's a FACTA is, is is one of the one of the bills. Basically, it's 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 saying that um, foreign banks have to report all their information so uh, to the to the IRS so that um, tax evasion, all the rich people evading taxes are having a lot more problems now um, finding banks overseas. So I think I think we're going to see that. Uh, another thing is, I mean, another capital control is you have a hard time even leaving the country with more than ten thousand dollars on you. Uh, they will, you know, ten thousand dollars cash. They will um, confiscate it, search you, whatever. Uh, first, first, I believe you'll see the smart money. The smart money and the elite uh, will leave the U.S. dollar like rats jumping off a fucking ship. So I believe that will happen. We'll see that happening fairly soon. Um, after that, we may see some bank failures, some bank holidays, which is when the banks uh, the banks will close for a number of days, maybe even weeks, to, to, to kind of shore up their deposits because they're insolvent. Uh, you know, of course, they're always backed by government as well. And uh, bail-ins, which if you don't know what that means, that is basically the bank will confiscate uh, a percentage of your deposit to, uh, to ride out their insolvency. This this happened. Uh, this happened in Cyprus. Um, they are drawing up plans. They've drawn up plans, and uh, the IMF have drawn up plans. The uh, European Central Bank has drawn up plans, and uh, it's probably not that far away for it, from it happening in in some major countries, not just not just Cyprus and, and so, such and such. Um, when that happens, they just confiscate the money. Um, you'll see the nationalization of retirement accounts, which you know basically they already regulate the shit out of it. Tell you when they tax it when it goes in and tax it when it comes out, and then they tell you where you can put it and how long you can put it and when you can take it out and all this. So it's almost nationalized now, but they will increasingly nationalize it uh, just so they can get to those funds. Pretty soon after that, we're going to see hyperinflation. I mean, we've already seen a large amount of inflation. I mean, ever since 1913, we've seen something like 96, 97% inflation since then. And since since the Federal Reserve was introduced, and it's it's kind of going up in an exponential curve. The last few years has been kind of hidden, where they've they've passed out a lot of uh, a lot of dollars to to banks and to investments and to stocks and to uh, foreign countries. So it's kind of it, it, it's not hasn't come out too much in prices yet, but oh, it fucking will. Once we get that, the price of energy, the price of oil, the price of food is going to go fucking crazy. Once we see that, I believe that uh, we will see price controls by the government. And this is usually, you always see this, you always see this 
with with hyperinflation, you see it any time anytime you have a socialist government, which we do, they try to control everything, they try to put a band aid on things, and it never it never fucking works. But they will do that. They'll put price controls on on certain things, maybe maybe oil, maybe you know, maybe food. And then you'll see uh, shortages. You'll see shortages um, of of essential goods. You'll see shortages of food. Um, the short some of the, the store shelves will be empty, and the shortages of the gas pump. And once that happens, you can you know you you really need to put a plan in place once that happens because the, the shit may hit the fan. Um, you can see rationing some of the some of the goods that you know maybe like um, welfare or food stamps. There's going to be some rationing of that. Of course, Obamacare, Medicare. There's going to be some rationing. There already is rationing, but that's going to increase. Um, and what this what this is going to do is this is going to impact people's standard of living, and it's going to spark some civil unrest. unrest. Uh, and of course, the civil unrest will be just an excuse for more regulations and more of a police state. And eventually, there'll be martial law in certain places, um, and probably uh, more war. Now we are, you know, we this country has been in war almost almost continuously for all its history. However. Uh, large-scale wars, mostly avoided recently. Um, one thing to distract people is a completely large-scale war. So that may happen. And when that happens, there are always corresponding civil rights violations in the country. And what I mean by that is people get thrown into Concentration camps, World War II, uh, anti-war press gets uh, gets thrown in jail. World War One, World War Two, Civil War. Um, any kind of so-called political dissidents will get thrown in jail or, or hunted down. That's that's happened. And those are the kind of things you can ex expect. Um, and you can never count out democide. Uh, democide is uh, when governments kill their own citizens. Uh, it's happened 162 million times in the 20th century. So it's not exactly something that you can discount and say it will never happen here because it's happened plenty of places and usually it's uh, when, a, when a government becomes tight to starts losing control and they become more totalitarian at that point and just start slaughtering people so that's just something to be prepared for um, you know as usual d during a crisis statists also you know the statists will claim or clamor from more government uh, to protect them and and the government agents will do whatever they can to hold on to their power so you can expect uh, before there's any kind of collapse or weakening of the U.S. government, there's going they're going to uh, expand their powers and start fucking with people a lot a lot more. So you can I, I'm very optimistic in the long run, but in the short run, I think it will get a lot worse before it gets better. So, and that is why I believe that everyone should prepare for situations like this. Um, basic preparations are easy. Um, and the most important things is just, most important thing is to just start thinking about these things and, and being prepared in your mind. All right, and this is the uh, Jason with the Whiskey Rebels, and we're signing off. We're on the... Uh, Voluntary Virtues Network. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.